whether on campus or off, more guns equals less crime. When I say ready, it's like I just open the door in your classroom. Ready! Stop it! There isn't a thing I wouldn't do for these kids in my classroom. Drop your weapon! Drop the weapon! And you don't feel that you would be any safer if students were allowed to carry guns. Absolutely not. I'm Christoph. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Doing all right. So what um, do you have here? So uh, this was actually the first tattoo that I got. Um, this spot right here is where the second bullet went through. Where else were you shot? Um, so the first one was this one, um, instantly paralyzed. The second bullet went through here, came out through this side, broke two of my ribs, collapsed my lung. Um, on the x-ray you can't see where the heart muscle stops and the bullet starts really. So. The bullets, They're both still there. The bullets are still in you, so that's yeah. what these are. Yeah. Ronnie Ahmed is a 23-year-old junior at Florida State University in Tallahassee. In 2014, he was shot on campus by a former student he'd never met. Today, as an activist, he's fighting to keep guns off of college campuses. So how many times have people told you you're lucky to be alive? No, I mean, I tell people that every day, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, you know, that's part of the reason I got the tattoos. There's been another mass shooting in America this time in a community college in Oregon. Somehow this has become routine. Florida State, Columbine, Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook. Shootings at schools and on college campuses have become a uniquely American phenomenon. In 2016 alone, guns were fired in schools 47 times. In response, states are going in two very different directions. Some are tightening firearms restrictions to keep guns out of schools. Others are pushing to allow guns on campus for protection. With Trump as president, the fight over carrying guns on campus is reaching a climax. I will get rid of gun-free zones on schools. My first day it gets signed, okay? My first day. There's no more gun-free zones. Last summer, Texas became the eighth state to legalize campus carry amid protests. Florida may be next. Shayna Lopez Rivas is the face of the campus carry movement here. She says she was anti-gun before she says she was raped by a stranger on the Florida State University campus, just one week before the shooting that injured Ronnie. Then, a friend brought her here. How did you go from coming here, learning how to shoot, to now being this advocate that's been embraced by the NRA and um, other gun rights groups. I was at the range and I had that like kind of epiphany of, wow, this can be used for self-defense that I could have used it to defend myself. Then she decided to share her story with the Florida legislature. November 13th, 2014 and November 20th, 2014. Remember those dates. <coughs> the first was when I was attacked on campus. The second when the FSU shooting occurred exactly one week later. Remember those dates when you vote for campus carry. And that was it. From, at that, from that point forward, it was just, okay, I guess I'm gonna advocate for this now. Shayna has since been featured in numerous pro-gun publications including the NRA's online channel. Representative for Florida Students for Concealed Carry, Shana Lopez-Rivas is with us. Shana, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me on the show. I've had people call me a paid member of the gun lobby, of which, if the gun lobby decides to watch this, I would love to get paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, that'd be great. <laughs> I could do this for a job. Is there anywhere that you think people shouldn't be allowed to conceal carry? I don't believe in gun-free zones working, and so I don't believe that there should be gun-free zones. It isn't just students like Shayna who are weighing the prospect of carrying guns on campus. I will tell you, if you had a couple of the teachers or somebody with guns in that room, you would have been a hell of a lot better off. Citing an uptick in school shootings, more than a third of states now allow elementary and high school teachers to bring guns onto school grounds. Okay, so when I say ready, it's like I just open the door in your classroom. Teachers and school employees here in South Jordan, Utah, are taking a concealed carry course specifically marketed to educators and learning what to do if they encounter an active shooter. 
How do you go about uh, approaching the idea that if you conceal carry in a classroom one day, you might be forced to make the decision on whether or not you're going to shoot a child? I, of course, want to protect the majority. And if it, that means taking out that one particular threat, if it means saving the rest of my classroom, you bet. And yes, it would, it would haunt me for the rest of my life. If my child was in your class, I would thank you till the rest of my life. Tammy Botello is a sixth grade teacher and former Marine. Has this been something you've been wanting to do? Like get your concealed carry permit to it's go to school? It's been in my head, but it's been a long time since I've carried a weapon mm -hmm. that I feel I have to be, especially with the situation I'm in, I have to feel very confident, very well trained. Under state law, Tammy isn't required to do any further training beyond the concealed carry permit course before she brings a gun into her classroom, nor is she required to tell the administration or parents that she's doing so. But with the potential of active shooters in mind, she opted for additional training in a virtual reality simulator with software specifically designed to mimic a school shooting. How are you feeling? Nervous. Yeah. You got this. yeah. This, this is, is the fun. time of this. This yeah. is the time to mess up. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All units, we have shots fired. Let's go, we got shots fired. Let's move, let's move. Wow. Yeah? Yeah. Heart's pumping. Heart's going pretty fast? Yeah. So what did it feel like to actually be in that scenario? Uh, very possible. Mm -hmm. Very realistic. Was there any part of you during that adrenaline, as you recognized that you were in a school that was hard about shooting a student? That first one, I just, I just felt even if I were to make such a horrible mistake, I need to move on to find the real threat. Critics of arming teachers point to accidents that have already happened. In 2014, a professor in Idaho accidentally shot himself in the foot. And last summer, an elementary school teacher in Pennsylvania left a loaded gun in a school bathroom where it was later found by students. Do you think that when you are ready, you'll be bringing a gun to school every day? Oh, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we live in that world now where back in the day when someone wanted to commit suicide, they just committed suicide. Now they're taking people out in the process. What would you say to a parent who might not understand why you want to carry a gun to school and might not approve of it? I would try to explain to them that I would give up my life protect their child and whatever that meant. There isn't a thing I wouldn't do for these kids in my classroom. Right now we're at the Strozier Library at the FSU campus where just less than two years ago, a gunman came right here and shot three students. And it's since become a galvanizing spot for a lot of students who want the right to carry guns on campus. But for Ronnie, who was shot here, he sees it another way. Technically, you know, right here is where it started. I heard the pop. I was standing, um, not the first table, the second table right over there. The gunman, seen here in this video, was a lawyer and former FSU student who had told friends he was hearing voices. You see, I am a victim of covert harassment uh, and electronic harassment and gang stalking. Um, I'm what's called a targeted individual. You know, I saw this guy walking around the bush right there, looked down in his hand as he was turning, saw the silver of the, the top of the gun, started to make the turn to try to, you know, run away before he got shot. 911, what's the address of the emergency? 
can furnish those in the library. Okay, so this is on FSU campus? Yeah. All right, stand on line. I'm going to transfer you to FSU Police Department. Hang on just a second. Okay. There's brick over there, so, um, you know, as the puddle just kept getting larger and larger, it wasn't a puddle, it was just line after line of, of blood just seeping out further and further away from me. I picked up my arm that was completely shattered, and I, all I could see was the, the bone. I didn't want it to be the end. You know, even immediately after the incident, uh, I made it very, very clear that even if I was carrying that day, it wouldn't have made a difference. Because by the time I recognized what his intent was, I was already paralyzed. Do you think that it's a false sense of security? Absolutely. This idea that these, you know, often young men who have never been to war zones or dealt with conflict, real conflict, or, uh, you know, anything of that nature, think that just because they're holding a gun that they, they have the training and the know-abouts to take down an armed assailant. It's unreal. The situation Ronnie is fighting against is spreading across the country. 17 states have banned carrying a concealed weapon on a college campus. But 24 states grant individual colleges and universities the authority to decide whether to ban or allow guns on campus. Eight states allow the carrying of concealed guns on public college campuses. And Tennessee allows only faculty members to carry. Shayna doesn't like to share just how many guns she currently owns, but did say she's always looking to buy more. Okay, I think that I'm gonna go with the 43 like I had planned before. Okay, yeah. good decision. Mm-hmm. Which did you end up getting? The Glock 43. And why is it that that's the gun that you wanted? I wanted a smaller carry gun than the one that I currently have now. And why is it important to you that people not know that you're carrying? You know, I want that element of surprise. I don't want people to know that I'm carrying. Um, if I need to use it, I want them to be caught off guard. Would you feel safer knowing that there are more students on campus carrying guns? I would feel safer uh, knowing that I am carrying guns. Right. <laughs> um, I get that part. Yeah. But what about other all students. of the other students. It's a college campus. Mm -hmm. You know, people are younger, there's often alcohol, and people make all kinds of decisions when they're in college that they might not make when they're adults. With the other colleges in the United States that have had campus carry, there's never been an incident in which somebody with a concealed carry license used a gun in a way that, like, they violently tried to attack somebody. You believe that more guns on campus would, in general, make people safer? I think that in general, whether on campus or off, more guns equals less crime. Shayna invited John Lott, the author of the best-selling book, More Guns, Less Crime, and a vocal proponent of gun rights, to FSU to build more support for the campus carry movement. I don't make constitutional arguments. To me, it's simply a matter of what saves lives. In 2003, Lott adopted a fake persona online pretending to be a former student who praised him for his work in an attempt to promote his research. He later publicly apologized for it. These killers, it, it's amazing how warped their minds are and what they view as their goals. They want to get media attention, and they know they can get more media attention the more people they can kill. Lott argues that mass shootings happen in schools because shooters seek out gun-free zones. The only type of law that we found that made any impact on these mass public shootings was the presence of concealed carry laws. When concealed carry laws were passed, there was about a 60% drop in the rate of mass public shootings. Ronnie and other members of the Campaign to Keep Guns Off Campus walked out of Lott's lecture. They'd been told it would be a forum for a debate about guns on campus, but it wasn't. They were going to write all the rules. They were going to write all of the questions. It was essentially a, a one-sided kind of debate. What's the hardest part for you listening to somebody uh, like that come to campus? People he inspires, for sure, um, because, you know, one person saying incorrect or ignorant things isn't that big of a deal. When other people start continuing false information, um, that's where the, the issue comes and people start believing the, those, you know, statements. The next day, Ronnie invited me to watch his morning routine. Pain is a constant, but he pushes through these exercises in the hopes that he'll one day walk again. Did you ever picture yourself having to do something like this? No. Yeah. No, I was 
one of the healthiest people that I knew of. The last place you ever thought you'd be. Yeah. yeah. Especially while attending school. What do you want people to know about what it's like going through this every day? You can't understand what it's like to to have to change your entire life in a you know a moment's notice to do everything differently to have to struggle significantly more than you've ever had to um, to, to deal with the pain every morning ronnie goes through these routines motivated by his resolve to keep guns off campus there's so much that we can do to help make people feel safe you know, the fact that we haven't even let non-lethal weapons on a lot of campuses before allowing the most lethal weapon that we have available um, is, uh, you know, absurd. To check out our entire documentary series where we explore issues like smart gun technology, the influence of the NRA, and gun violence in Chicago, make sure to subscribe to AJ Plus and watch more docs.